how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? I'm driving around and for some reason I got reminded of a time when I wanted something really, really bad and I was willing to do whatever I had to do to make it happen. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. This all happened at a time in my life when I had been just very, very ill. I was sick for a long time, guys. I mean, a couple of years, I was really at the peak uh, of the illness, uh, suffering from a disorder of my esophagus, couldn't eat food. And at the peak of that disorder, I weighed 96 pounds. And I'm standing as tall as I am weighing 96 pounds. I look like walking death. You know, and I, I was feel like I was literally dying of starvation. I was dying a slow death, and I just got sick and tired of that. I said, I just don't want to be sick no more. I want it to be whole. I want it to be healed, and I was willing to do whatever I had to do to make this thing happen. And so I, you know, I have been watching um, the evangelist on TV. I've been watching Ben Hinn, y'all. So I decided I wanted to go to his church. So. What I did, I got real desperate one day, and this was on a day when I was uh, doing what I do, y'all, taking care of other people's children. And But I was so sick that day, and I decided I'm going to Orlando, Florida to go to this church and, and just get prayed for by this man to do whatever I got to do so I can get better. So what I did was I just uh, put my little stuff in a bag, and, and started out walking. I had a little bit of cash, guys, because let me tell you, if you don't know, Pat Martin always got a little stash somewhere, um, saving it for a rainy day. And that was a rainy day. It was storming on that day, as far as I was concerned. Everybody need to have a little stash somewhere. That's a topic for a whole nother day. Anyway, I got my little stash of cash and I took out walking and I walked to a bus stop, uh, took a martyr bus, to downtown Atlanta and got on a Greyhound bus and took that bus to Orlando, Florida. Got to Orlando, called my mama to come and get me. <laughs> he said, come get your child because I'm, I'm dying and I don't want to die. I'm not ready to die yet. God is not through with me yet. So anyhow, I get on this bus, get to Orlando where my mom came to get me. I remember she, she took me in the house and she tried to make something for me to eat. Remember, I could not swallow food. So I remember she made this, she did it, had a little bowl and she put a slice of toast in it and she poured milk on it to, to make it soft. Now, that does not sound, sound like the most appealing meal, milk toast, <laughs> but I tried to eat it and it just would not go down. So again, I'm going for days and days, y'all, without being able to eat. I just, I just wanna break down even when I think about it now. But nevertheless, I got there and when I, when I let me back up, when I left the people's children, Believe me, I didn't just leave children alone. My husband was there with the children. Now he probably wasn't happy that he got left with all this house full of children. <laughs> but he was probably really concerned about me and where I had gone and disappeared to because I ain't, I ain't tell nobody nothing. <laughs> you know how the guy say, ain't nobody told me nothing. I ain't tell nobody nothing. I just got desperate and went for it. So the next day when I, I got to uh, the church, I was determined to get to church, a lady had called her house and she was a member of um, Pastor Hen's church. And so when she called me, I said, listen, I want to go to church with you tomorrow. And I know that was God, even the fact that she happened to call on, on that night, call my mom's house. And so she came and got me for church that day and gave me a ride to church. Now, while I was in that church service, I, I saw uh, Pastor Hen was looking out over the audience and he started calling families because at that point, y'all, people were traveling from all over the world to bring their people to be healed and to be prayed for in this service. So when I saw him calling, he said, where is the family from Chicago? Where is the family from Dallas? You know, and these families that would come up and bring their loved ones who they uh, would be prayed for and healing was happening all around me. And so at one point I started talking to God and I said, God, I want you to let him know that I'm here and I need to know that he knows that I am here. Shortly after I said that, y'all, Pastor Benny Hinn looked over the audience and out of all those hundreds of thousands of people there in that church service that day, he looked down straight at me, pointed to me, and he said, bring her to me. Bring that woman 
to me. And I was like, oh my God, Jesus, God has heard my prayer. Listen, he heard your prayer. He heard it the first time you prayed it. And so when he said, bring that woman to me. So uh, they got me in there and uh, took me up on the stage and I went up on the stage and he began to pray for me. When he prayed for me, that was the very first time that I actually experienced what it was like to be slain under the power of the spirit, the Holy Ghost. I was out cold. <laughs> Who didn't even know what happened. And this is what happened. Then when I stood up, all of a sudden I felt this this feeling of it, it was a coolness that came over me over my chest it felt like what happens when you put a um the vicks mentholatum stuff those cough drops you know that coolness of that menthol uh i felt that kind of coolness that fresh coolness that came over my chest i knew that something had happened when i left there um my mom i had i had to call her to come give me a ride so she gave me a ride home and um when but we didn't go straight home we went to kentucky fried chicken i'll never forget it and so when we got to the restaurant i went and i got fried chicken and string beans and mashed potatoes i'll never forget that meal talk about the last supper that was the first supper <laughs> for me and I ate food. And when I put the food in my mouth, that was the first time in a long, long time in weeks that I felt food go down my throat, down my esophagus and get inside my stomach. I knew that a miracle had happened on that day. And I believe that it was because I was desperate and I wanted it really bad. Listen, the whole thought of, of this video is answering the question, how bad do you want it? If you want something bad, it's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take you stepping out on faith. You're going to have to go through life, uh, life with blinders on. And you're going to have not only have on blinders, you're going to have to put hearing aids on too. Because you're going to have to block out what people are saying. You're going to have to block out things that you see or things that you don't see. You just got to get use whatever you got to get what you want. Right now, I'm in the midst of trying to do this business for myself. Let me tell you, it's a sacrifice. And, and that's what really made me think about doing this particular video because it's taken a lot to do this. For somebody who really wants to do a business right, to get all the paperwork straight that you need, to go through every process, you know, you got to respect the process and you got to do the process because if you don't, the process, the processors will cross your path. You're going to cross paths with them and they're going to make sure uh, and ask you, have you gone through the process and so I am at the place right now that I'm desperate to make it happen and I know how bad I want it so that's why I don't mind staying up late at night and getting up early in the morning to do whatever it is that I have to do because I believe that it can happen so I'm saying to you today do whatever you got to do desperate times calls for desperate measure do whatever you got to do whatever is legal and moral <laughs> do you hear me to make it happen for yourself i'm asking you the question today how bad do you want it